Hello everyone. Welcome back to Analog Snippets. In video number 42, we have briefly discussed oversampling and noise shaping ADCs in context of high accuracy temperature sensors. In this video, I want to introduce the basic idea behind these ADCs using a non-technical example. So let's get going. Imagine a walking track in your local park. Suppose you are tasked with measuring the length of this walking track and you need to measure it in nearest 100 meters. You are provided with a handheld odometer. Odometer is a device which measures the distance. It is an accurate odometer, but unfortunately, it only tells the distance in kilometers. So basically, you need to devise a way to measure this distance with 10 times better accuracy using this odometer. What can you do? Fortunately, you have time in your hand. So you start walking with your odometer and complete one round. After one round, your odometer tells you one kilometer. And that means length of the path can be anything between one to two kilometers. Not good enough, you think. So in desperation, you keep walking. Every time you complete a round, you note the reading. After 10 rounds, you think of taking a break. So you stop your odometer and head towards a park bench. After taking some rest, you look again at your odometer reading. 16 km. Wow, you have done some work today. A reading of 16 km means you have walked somewhere around 16 to 17 km. And you made 10 rounds of the park. And suddenly it occurred to you. 16 km in 10 round means 1.6 km in 1 round. So it means that length of the path is 1.6 to 1.7 kilometers. And so you have done it. As a matter of fact, you want to do better now. So you make another 10 round. In fact, you returned whole week to the park and completed 100 round. At the end of the week, you go back to park authorities and give your measurement. Length of the walking track is between 1.63 kilometers to 1.64 kilometers. And you are enjoying the amused look on their faces. With an otherwise accurate odometer which only tells the distance in kilometers, you measure the length in nearest 10 meters. Okay, now let's sit back and try to understand what is really happening here. How can you make a precise measurement using a coarse scale? One thing that you are obviously doing different here is you are measuring the same distance multiple times. So that means you are doing oversampling. And because of the oversampling, you are essentially taking more time to do the same measurements. But oversampling is not the entire trick. You are doing something more. In fact, you are doing noise shaping. To understand the difference, imagine that you reset your odometer every time you finish one complete round of the path. Would you be able to improve your precision this way? In fact, if you start doing this, you will be measuring one kilometer of the completion of every round. And if you add the reading of every round, after 10 rounds, you will get 10 kilometers. In short, you will not improve your precision. The trick here is not resetting your odometer. What you are essentially doing is to carry over your error to the next cycle. And this is known as noise shipping. In fact, what I have just described is the principle of first order sigma delta modulator ADC. Just to be sure, in some cases, just oversampling can improve your precision. Let's say you are measuring something which has a random measurement error. For example, let's say you are measuring height of your child using a measuring tape. Since measuring tape is an awkward device and your child cannot stay still, you make errors in every measurement. So you take several measurements. So you are doing oversampling here. And you are also doing every measurement afresh, so you are resetting it every time. At the end of several measurements, you take the average and that is your best guess of the measurement. So in this case, you have improved your precision, but you are not doing noise shaping. So now I hope you have an intuitive grasp of oversampling and noise shaping. Now let's quickly look at the structure of a sigma delta modulator ADC. Here is a general block diagram of such ADCs. First, note that it is a feedback system. Now, it is not a typical situation for Nyquist rate ADCs. Now let's look at different components of this ADC. Since it is an analog to digital converter, obviously the input is an analog signal and output is a digital signal. 
The circle over here takes the difference between the input signal and the feedback signal. This subtraction is in analog domain, so this feedback signal has to be an analog signal. And that is why we have a digital to analog converter in the feedback. This difference is represented by delta in the sigma delta ADC. The next block is loop filter, which can be a simple integrator in case of first order sigma delta ADCs. And since integrator accumulates, that is the sigma part of sigma delta ADC. The next block is analog to digital converter. And here is the thing. It can simply be a comparator. If you think about it, a comparator is simply a one bit ADC. It compares input with a reference signal and gives either a zero or one. And since every ADC requires a sampling clock, you are sampling at this point. Although the subtraction and integration can be done in continuous time, but the most common implementation is often discrete time sigma delta ADCs. So let's now build a very simple first order sigma delta ADC and see how it works. So here we have our first order sigma delta ADC. The clock comparator is one bit ADC and feedback DAC is a simple switch which selects either between ground or a VREF. For simplicity, let's set VREF to one volt and clock to one hertz. Let's also assume that the subtraction and integration are discrete time operation. Let's now apply a DC input signal of 0.7 volt at the input and follow different node voltages for 10 seconds. The first row here represents the initial condition. That means the condition just before the first sampling. Now since Y is less than VREF, we'll get zero at the comparator output. And that means for next cycle, F will be connected to the ground. That means zero volts. So before the second sampling, E still remains at 0 0.7. The integrator or accumulator adds the new value of E to the accumulated value. As a result for the second sample, value of Y is now greater than VREF. So the comparator output is one. As a result of this change, F is now connected to VREF and becomes one volt for the next cycle. And now since F value is greater than the input U, E becomes negative. This new error value is again added to the accumulated value. Notice that in this table, the first event is the value of output V. All other values in the same row represents what happens after this output is obtained. You may want to represent it differently if you find this confusing. I will now go ahead and complete the table. So I have completed the table here and take some time to go through it. I will highlight some observations now. Notice that output is always either a zero or one, which is expected from a one bit ADC. Similarly, feedback signal is either zero or one, but notice that it is an analog signal. So it's either zero volt or one volt. Contrast this with V, which is a digital signal. Error signal is either 0 0.7 or minus 0 0.3, depending on the feedback signal. But Y is apparently all over the places. Also note that in row number nine, both input of the comparator are at one volt. Ideally, it is a metastable state for the comparator. But here I have arbitrarily assigned one to the output. You can as well assign a zero if you wish. After 10 cycle, the output of the accumulator is same as the initial condition. So this sequence will repeat itself from now onwards. Now let's look at the output sequence. Now, if we count the number of zeros and one in the output sequence, we get three zeros and seven one. And if we average it out, we'll get 0 0.7, which is guess what? Same as our input. And this is how in general Sigma Delta ADCs work. Now, if we change our input to 0 0.71, we'll get more or less same output sequence. Because in first order Sigma Delta ADCs, we can't get enough precision with only 10 samples. So if we want to differentiate between 0 0.7 and 0 0.71, then probably we need to increase the number of samples. If we take 100 samples, then we hope to get 71 ones with the DC input of 0 0.71 volt. And this is a trick in general with the Sigma Delta ADCs. You increase the sampling rate or number of samples to get high accuracy. I would like to highlight another observation here. If we look at the output sequence again, it is 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, which is pretty repetitive. This is because 0 0.7 is pretty close to two third. 
and two thirds can be represented by a sequence of one zero and two ones. This is a very typical behavior of a first order sigma delta ADC loop. And this repetition is a problem because this represents a tone. This behavior is also called limit cycle behavior. A very typical fix of limit cycle behavior is to increase the order of the loop. And it is done by using a higher order loop filter in this loop. Okay, now we are going into finer details of sigma delta ADCs, which was not the intention of this video. Sigma delta ADCs are fascinating beasts, and I hope to explore them in my future videos. I want to finish with a couple of more points about sigma delta ADCs. A continuous stream of zero and ones is not really what we expect out of an ADC. Rather, we would expect certain number of bits coming in parallel out of the ADC. As a matter of fact, all sigma delta ADCs are made of two subsections. What we have discussed is the analog subsection and it is followed by a digital subsection. In the digital domain, there is a filter called decimation filter, which converts this continuous streams of zeros and one into certain number of parallel bits. Decimation refers to reducing the sampling rate. It takes a low precision, high sampling rate data and convert it into high precision and low sampling rate data. For our example of first order one bit ADC, a simple counter can act as a decimation filter. So basically you count number of ones and give it as your digital output. For example, for a six bit output, you will count for 64 clock cycle and output your six bit. Okay, my second point is that this stream of zero and one is known as another name. It is known as pulse density modulation. So basically depending on the value of input signal, the density of ones changes in this stream. Okay, so that was all I wanted to talk about in this video. So post your comment below and thanks for watching.